So this week's impact starts off with Bully Ray coming down to the ring to cut a promo. And he says that he learned something from fighting Joseph Park. And that is, if you have enough evidence against somebody, more than likely you can get a conviction. Now, it's, it's kind of paraphrasing, but not really. Sort of, kind of, you know. But kind of really ties into what the main event is tonight because he's, he's taking on the cowboy James Storm. And with that, you hear, you see your, sorry about your damn luck. And with that, Storm comes down to the ring and he basically tired of everybody accusing him of being the ringleader of this group. And he's sick and tired of being sick and tired. And anyway, and he's, he just goes on to say, if it, anybody doesn't believe me, you can come down and fight me. I'm drawing the line in the sand, as it were. So then you, you see aces and eights on the video screen and you... And of course, their voice are digitized. So it's, kind of, it's almost kind of like the you know, the voice are just being digitized out. So obviously, you're not supposed to be able to tell who it is. But they're basically they're gonna they're gonna announce their next victim later on tonight. And and then after this, after it goes off, Billy Ray is more convinced than ever that Storm is actually behind this. So, wow, that's it's another it's another person to add to to Bobby Roode to, hey, and Kurt Angle thinks he's behind it also. So, boy, the evidence looks pretty damning, doesn't it? So we had three BFG series matches tonight, and and here's number one, RVD taking on Magnus. With Mr. Anderson sitting in on commentary. Ugh. Not much to say about this match. Um, didn't go very long. Um, RVD goes over clean with the five star frog splash, and that's about it. Alright, the next match is from the Department of Redundancy Department. We, we get a tag team title match between the world, with the World Tag Team Champions of the World. Kazarian and Christopher Daniels taking on Devon and Garrett Bischoff. Hmm. Well, I guess one way to get a title shot is to hit up Sting for one, I guess. Because that's what Devon and Garrett Bischoff did. Um, not much to say about this match either. Um, Daniels and Kazarian retained with some shenanigans with a belt shot to Devon's head. And that's about all you can say about this match. Ugh. What is TNA really trying to do here? Are they trying to get Robbie E over by having him fight the one of the biggest baby faces in the company and Jeff Hardy? Why are they wasting their time on this, this freaking loser? It's like he he should go back to the freaking Jersey Jersey Shore, my dude. Anyway, Didn't really get this segment other than the fact I know I know they're in a tables match this, on Sunday, but are they really trying to make you think that Robbie E is actually going to get the 20 points in this match? I mean, really? I mean, seriously? <sighs> he fucking sucks, bro. Okay, your one hour main event was the phenomenal AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle. But before we get into that, we have a little announcer table promo by Samoa Joe come, come storming out there and he's all, he's all intense and this and that, you know. Saying that he's going to basically beat people up and that, but which I thought was, a, it was, thought it was actually pretty good, but then we get into the match and this was the absolute highlight of the show for me because this was... This to me was one of the best matches I've seen on TV in quite some time. I mean, it, I mean, it was just back and forth throughout. Each man were hit their finisher and they would kick out. It finally, finally took took a second angle slam by Kurt Angle to defeat AJ Styles. He gets the seven points. 
Another, another thing about this match, you, you had that skank Claire Lynch in the audience. She was actually cheering on AJ this week. Kind of a far cry from last week where she, where she was screaming at the camera saying, Do the right thing, AJ! Do the right thing, AJ! Yeah, it's, boy, it's, it's just like a mo woman to have those kind of mood swings, you know. Just wonder if she, if she doesn't have some kind of bipolar to her or something, or you know. But, but all in all, this match was really good, and I thought, and again, I thought it was the highlight of the show for me. Then we had another message from Aces and Eights saying who their next victim is going to be. They. Well, they didn't really say who it was going to be, but but they said later on they they would reveal who it was, which which kind of which again kind of ties into what Mister An Minister Anderson meets up with James Storm in the back, and he and he's he's back there talking to Storm about his boys or whatever. It's like, well, they're not my boys. He Storm's saying, but but Anderson seems to be on the bandwagon of. Uh, Bobby Roode and Bully Ray and Kurt Angles th thinking that that storm really is behind us so it's like the it's like the evidence is really stacked against storm it, it would seem and and people are buying into this so it's gonna be I personally I don't think he is behind this all this whole thing but but you know stranger things have happened all right, then you had a non-title little knockout match between Tess Mocker and Gail Kim. Match lasted about four minutes, and Tess Mocker goes over, as you would think. But, <laughs> and shortly after the match, old Goatface herself, Madison Rain, comes down to the ring and and gives Earl Hebner a bit, big left lock and drop, drops onto the canvas. And, oh boy. If Earl Hebner is the referee uh, in the match on Sunday night, which I have no doubt that he will be, I'm thinking Madison Rain's going to be the new knockout champion, and God, I hope not, because she absolutely blows freaking goats. Next. They did a little kind of a vignette about Kenny King, about how he, he took, took a big chance to come to TNA after well, basically, after he left his former partner, Rhett Titus, behind in ROH, after they, about a week after they'd won the ROH Tag Team titles, and he basically talks about winning the, te the excuse me, the X Division title from Zima Ion, which he gets, he gets a shot at it on Sunday at Hardcore Justice, and, and, Bring, bring some more star power back to the X Division after Aries gave up the X Division title to go for the world title, which he eventually won. So, it's, Kenny King is a he's a good addition to the X Division roster, I believe. Then in the back, you had A Double talking to somebody on on his cell phone, talking about how Bobby Roode has has problem with language in the contract for their world title match on Sunday. And he just basically says, "Well, oh, we're we're gonna get it figured out," which then leads to the contract signing itself. And Sting comes out there first, and then, and then followed by Rude, and then Aries, and and Rude's giving Sting all this attitude about how how if if he doesn't win the match, what what it says in the contract? If he doesn't win the match, he doesn't get another shot at Aries and. Until he's not the champion anymore, and but a double comes up with a better idea. It's like, well, hey, we don't we don't need this stinking contract. How about how about how about we have a verbal agreement? It's like, if you don't win, you get a, you don't get a rematch against against me. And if if you somehow by a fluke beat me. For the, for the title, I I I will waive my waive my rematch clause, and and so they both they both shake hands and then Rude, Rude gets some water out 
He takes a drink of water and spits it right in his face. So, I mean, it's not, not so much a typical contract signing. I mean, there wasn't so many shenanigans until the very end of it, but usually when you see a contract signed on television, there's a lot more shenanigans going on than what, what Rude did. But, but all in all, I, I thought it was a pretty good segment. So then your main event, which was, it's kind of announced last week, but then it was kind of reiterated in the beginning of the show. Cowboy James Storm against Bully Ray. And match itself was all right, actually. And Bully Ray got the seven points in the pin after, after, after the Bubba Cutter. And it's kind of surprising that he went over clean on, on Storm. You, want, you, you probably would have thought there could have been some shenanigans in the match, but there really wasn't. But ef afterwards, you, you see another pr promo by Ace and Ace up on the video screen there. And they they announced their target for for Sunday, and it's Bully Ray. They're all going to come after Bully Ray, and he's think, thinking, wow, Me? Me? And it, it just kind of ties into what what Mr. Anderson was saying when he talk, talked to Storm backstage. And it's like, everything in a roundabout way kind of kind of comes back to you, doesn't it? Talking about Storm. And it's like, and God, it's kind of looking that way. It's like, like all the evidence is pointing to James Storm being the ringleader. And, and they're doing, I think they're doing a really good job to m making you think so. So... We shall see now, shouldn't we? Shall we? Okay, final thoughts on this show. I thought the... Well, the, the highlight for me tonight was the one-hour main event between AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. Excellent match. One of the best TV matches I've seen in a while. Then the contract signing between Aries and Rude. I thought that was pretty well done. But the... Oh my God! The knockout, ma the knockout title match on Sunday. Please don't let Madison Rain win, please, please. Anyway, I'm signing off for now. This is Marvelous Mark, and I will see you later.